Uh, first of all, let me thank you for having me here on you. And second, I want to apologize in advance for my English pronunciation. I hope I I wish for you. Our days in Argentina view not only the wave of two terrorist attacks still unpunished, but also the ways in which we deal with them. Some of those ways evo evoke the word Marano. It may sound disturbing and anachronistic, both for its pejorative side as for its romantic echoes, the epic of a perpetual exile in search of its origin, Marano, in its dramatic original meaning, may sound excessive. Nevertheless, it is a powerful metaphorical way to describe moments in which being Jewish constituted is no longer an immediate death sentence, sentence, at least a drawback for those who wanted to participate in the public life of the country. Something of the sort happens today in Argentinian society, not in a traditional way. Being Jewish is no longer an obstacle to access high positions. Nevertheless, the Jewish question is today a frequent issue, even a kind of state issue, in a country where the Jewish communi community is the only one required to declare its loyalty to one or another ideology or party. In this scenario, the question about who is a better Jew is frequently raised. This has a disturbing resonance less for what being Jewish implies as such than for what the definition implies in the context of anti-Semitism. Jew. The word pervades the fabric of our politics, sometimes behind the scenes, other times jumping into our faces, perhaps in inquiries that resemble trial by fire, or springing from mouths or pens that used to avoid it. It can even resound among opportunistic preachers who declare we are all Jews. In the triviality that remains today's media, there were those who used the term with a self-righteous air to destabilize the national government. Now that the party line of the government has changed, the word is used to celebrate or revive the new authorities. The truth is that the victims of the terrorist attacks do not seem to matter to either of them become a pawn in a political game. In the memorial ceremonies, characters who never showed any interest suddenly run and rip their clothes in front of the Holocaust Museum. The protests against the stagnation of the investigation are summoned by the same public prosecutors who had played a deplorable role in it. There were, and they still are, those who claim the word Jew as their own, as their own, claiming a so-called Jewish vote in order to pass their own agenda as the voice of the citizens mobilized under no party banner. Whoever is familiar with Jewish institutions in Argentina knows how their authorities have always been institutional officials with little or no political background, but with long-time long activism in the community. They are summed by the question that every Jewish Kedila in the diaspora must sooner or later address, how to deal with power. But as that everyday scene was suddenly and brutally catapulted into the international arena by the barbaric attack of July 18, 1994, these officials, bereft of any political skills, are now requested to act as if they were up to the task at hand. And for some reason, they believe they are. 
this gives this gives them a strange, even possessive halo. Suffice it to recall the gift that AMIA, uh, Asociación Mutual Israelita Argentina, the main institution of uh, Jewish community, the gift that AMIA presented Obama during his visit, a book that per perhaps none of the in, uh, of none of them could read since it, it is written in Yiddish, in an elegant case, the work of the nation's official goldsmith. Knowing the version of stories, how can we not associate this scene with that of the first Jewish settlers meditating on how to bless the president without even knowing for sure the color of the Argentinian flag? There may be some similarities between both scenes, but there are certainly two major differences. The absence, in the more recent case, of the naive endearment characterizing the early situation, and the presence, in this more recent, of an amazing servility, one that evokes a medieval figure, the Mayufes is. Thus, when the Jewish authorities agreed, for instance, to exclude part of the organization of families of the victims from the list of, of speakers at the community's memorial ceremonies under the guise of depoliticizing the event, they suppressed the ethical core that should pervade the words of our, our institutions. On the other hand, there are those who protest against this official community in sanctimonious tones, claiming they do not represent us. They declare vociferously that they are the true Jews. They call themselves Argentinians of Jewish origin, Argentino de origen judío, adding immediately that this origin, although they, it concerns them, does not affect their identity as Argentines. The explanatory drive is all the more curious, being as it is unnecessary, since that is exactly what the law states. However, these Argentines of Jewish origin found it necessary to prelude their first public appearance with the national anthem, Ala Shunov, while projecting images of Jewish personalities remembered for their cultural and scientific contribu contribution to Argentine society, overacting national identity as if fearing to be accused of not good enough Argentines. A Frenchman at the end of the 19th century would have said, a French citizen of Israelite confession. In a more secular key, they accuse official institutions of having a vulgar perspective and propose themselves as Argentinians expressing, expressing qua Jews their potential, massive, critical, leftist, or humanist and ethical participation. Curiously, many of them had long kept a distance from community activities, considering that such involvement was, so to speak, socially or politically incorrect. For them, the Jewish question had to be subsumed in the general question of the oppressed and the minorities. They considered taking a stand regarding community activities as tribal, or even discriminatory. In a progressive liberal key, pro, sorry, in a progressive liberal left key, they try to hide the Jew behind the public citizen, granting him or her Republican equality, while at the same time silencing in the national rhetoric that recalcitrant, disturbing Jewish difference, that difference with which no one knows how to deal. I spoke above of an anti-Semitic context. By that, I mean not, not only the word Jew uttered as an insult, swastikas on the walls, 
violent attacks on Israeli tourists in the south of the country, or the situations of cemetery in the north. Although these may be relatively infrequent occurrences, our view changes if we align them and then pay attention to certain expressions that now abound when speaking about the attacks of the embassy and the AMIA. Self-attack, auto-attentado, world conspiracy, foreign secret, service, secret services, international banking. Petty as they may be, none of these episodes is negligible in a country that had its own pogrom and where Eichmann found refuge. Their importance should not be downplayed today when academics decrees state the end of anti-Semitism, see Jews as turning to the right, and describe, describe, them, describe them as perpetrators of the worst evils, unless they present exculpatory evidence to distance themselves from their accursed world, Zionist. And here we find the saving formula for the liberal progressive speaker who does not tolerate being suspected, suspected of anti-Semitism, Jew, a term so uncomfortable to condemn after the Shoah, can now be easily replaced by Zionists, a word that without doubt can be considered the virus. Zionist comes to serve as a little linguistic miracle that allows to divide the waters between the just and the sinful. Jew is the victim of the terrorist attack. But mark that, that is all he can be, a victim. While Zionist is an absolute culprit, totally, always, and without attenuation. These are the only two alternatives, plain victimhood or absolute guilt. A trap, a real trap, in order to be considered a good Jew, you have to distance yourself from the accursed Zionist. This unappealable option links the current situation with that of the Maranos, the good Jew who chooses the truth purifies with his atonement the evil of the Zionist. Thus, the Jew becomes a penitent, a repentant who purges the error of his existence. His Jewishness must be redeemed. His Jewish memory must be relegated to the cellar, to some dark corner where secrets and ghosts flourish. How can Argentine progressivism ignore that equating Israelis with Nazis constitutes a mortification, not only absurd, but cruel to all Jews, Zionists or not. How can they force us to accept this epithet as suitable to describe the state of Israel or else be excluded from their realm? Whoever seeks to access certain areas, especially in the academic fields, must think of the unsolved terrorist attack in an, in an abstract key, without referring to Jews or anti-Semitism, must agree to be accused of genocide and accept that we learn nothing from the Shoah, must reproduce all anti-Semitic theses not without invoking one's own Jewish descent, appealing to a rhetoric that establishes that, after all, it is always the Jews, that is the Zionists, who push for war, must accept without hesitation that the versions of the 20th century totalitarianism are Nazism, Communism, Zionism must say out loud that maternal transmission in Jewish tradition is pure and plain racism. And the list goes on. This irresistibly recalls forced conversion. In 1492, the Jew could be purified if he embraced the Christian religion. Now, 
he can purify himself if he vilifies his Jewish condition. Being a Marano today consists then in accepting the comparison between Jews and Nazis, in accepting self denigration as Jews. Perhaps this explains the urgency of so many to stress, as if question, their commitment to the country, calling out, knowingly or not, to embrace this new way of Maranism. We cannot but stress that, it, that this happens in Latin America, where we speak the language of an empire model in the heat of that drama, the language that always suspects the Marano, who constantly requires him to prove his good faith. Today, the demands may be different, but they exist, mostly in ideological terms. And once again, they establish division among both good and bad Jews, reprobate and repentant, bad Zionists and real Jews. Perhaps it is also the reason that there are those who hurry to explain why we Jews are to blame. I'm referring here to an article that was in the papers during the last Gaza war that was called um, um, We Jews are to blame. The phrase is not new, although historically it used to be expressed in another way. Jews live in error, an error that can be amended with our penances, but time changes. So please, tell us, what are we supposed to do now, acceptable Jews that we are, so that they do, they do not confuse us with the others, the reprobate, the impenitent, the sinners? Please tell us, how can we collaborate with that abstract universalism that our very existence seems to threaten. Whether they define themselves as a religion or as an ideology, Jews in Argentina seem to yield to a demand, in quite or full-fledged, to ignore specific Jewish memory, a memory that appears to be tolerated as a secret or un un ultimately as a specter, but finally to be exorcised or hidden, but not displayed on its own terms. That is why we say specter, because that specific Jewish memory seems to be dealt as an heritage, both present, invoked as a metaphor, and at the same time, at the same time absent not recognized in its own specific character in this demand to define Jewishness according to ideologies. External definitions are irrelevant to the Jewish condition, which, irreducible to totality, may contain in it the greatest divergences. Those demands are alien to Jewish historical, sociocultural, linguistic realms even if this realm can offer argumentative resources to sustain different positions. I think I have made myself clear, I hope so. As a Jew, I don't feel represented by this dilemma. But I want also to be explicit, even at the risk of being redundant. I do not speak only about political debates or ideological confrontations, but of a poisoned atmosphere, an air that is less and less breathable by the day. True, one is used to live with it, but it should be said, we cannot and must not accept the demand to define an ideologically correct Jewishness, a correction that aims to nullify that disturbing Jewish difference that, having had to be left behind, nevertheless insists on returning. It is true that the demand conjures up Jewish memory, but it does, it does so with the ambiguity of the verb conjurar in Spanish, which means both to make present 
and to drive away. It is a call for a specter to appear, but also a way of exercising it. I know my words don't sound serene nor optimistic. They harbor no illusion either of being safe or lamenting. They know there is something irresolvable in anti-Semitic language that is not a clue capable of engulfing any potential thought, a language that is not revoked but by moralizing decrees or by political correctness of any kind. There is no use in explaining what others cannot or will not hear, but I think it is necessary, not necessary to try and define where we stand. So let's place ourselves, or at least let me place myself. A Jew, says Charles Lacan, is someone who can read. Reading in the midst of the logic of the media made of spectacle, immediacy, cliches, and figures meant for easy identification is a way of preserving Jewish memory, of fighting ignorance, and I don't mean lack of information, but blindness in the reading, avoidance, denial, even at the book of physical contact, ignorance in its biblical sense, not a lack of erudition, but the lack of curiosity, that is, the a lack of the joy of thinking, a lack of inspiration as a foundational act. Thank you very much.